So probably you are thinking of becoming an iStock photo contributor or you are lost mid in the application process. After my experiences, iStock Photo is one of the most professional and therefore also most rigid stock selling agencies out there. But it's certainly worth trying, both uh, as a personal and as a professional challenge. This tutorial will deal with the um, iStock Photo quality standards for vector illustrations and will guide you step by step through a typical quality check before you would submit your artwork to iStock Photo for review. I'm going to concentrate on the technical aspects here as laid down in the iStock Photo Stock Illustration Training Manual. So we are going to have a look at the correct file formats for submission. We are uh, having a look at avoiding lack of edit editability. Um, also unconverted fonts and especially stray points and shapes, open shapes, unconverted custom fills and strokes. The file which I prepared for this tutorial has actually passed the iStock Photo quality control and is now part of my portfolio on iStock Photo. Of course I built in some uh, typical flaws, errors and mistakes so that I can demonstrate by using this vector graphic illustration how you should check on your file in order to comply to iStock Photo quality standard. To begin with, let us deal with the issue of open unclosed shapes. I prepared an illustrator file illustrating that specific problem. Have a look at the shape here to the left. It looks fine at the first glance, but if I'm going to select it, then you can see that there are actually two anchor points which are not connected and you should avoid this under all circumstances. It really doesn't matter if the stroke is set to none. If I apply a uh, color here and uh, scale up the stroke weight, then you can see that this is really a problem you need to take care of. Same things with strokes which have a fill applied. This results in very odd vector graphic forms and it's not allowed on iStock Photo. The way to do it is demonstrated here below. This is a plain closed shape, just beautiful, and you are also allowed to use single strokes without a fill, like in this sample. That's it. First problem for us would be how to find those annoying open shapes and strokes with fill applied. Unfortunately, Illustrator offers no built-in routine for finding open shapes and strokes with the fill, but we can find some very helpful plugins and scripts on the internet. If you're working on Illustrator CS3 to CS5, you can go to this webpage rj-graphics.com slash software slash plugins.html. There you will find, amongst other things, the concatenate and the select plugins. You can download those plugins here, follow the instructions and integrate this into your Illustrator CS3 to CS5 installation. I'm, however, working on Illustrator CS6 and since Adobe changed the plugin structure for CS6, those plugins unfortunately are not working anymore in Illustrator CS6. There is a fine workaround offered though um, at the Adobe Community Forum. forums.adobe.com slash thread slash 10349.com 34937. Here you can find a JavaScript for selecting open paths in Illustrator CS6. Here is the small JavaScript. You need to copy the script and then to use a text editor, a plain text editor of your choice, Notepad or Notepad++, to save this as a plain JavaScript file. Just follow the instructions uh, on this website. Once you have prepared your JavaScript, we can return to Illustrator. 
If we want to use this JavaScript in our Illustrator installation, we need to integrate it. Um, first, we need to find out where the application folder of our current Illustrator illustration exactly is located. We can get this information from the main menu Help, and there we got the system info. If you scroll down this very extensive list of information, you finally, here it is, will find the information about the program's application folder. In my case, it is in C, my C drive, Program Files, Adobe, Adobe Illustrator CS6 64-bit. Okay, now I'm going to find this folder in the Windows Explorer comes here. So I'm on C drive, program files, Adobe folder. There is my Illustrator CS6 64-bit version. And if you're inside this folder, check for the presets folder. If you open this, you will reach a language folder. And inside this folder, I have the scripts folder. Open it. Mm -hmm. I have already placed my uh, JS JavaScript file in this folder. Select Open Paths. All what you need to do now is to copy the file exactly into this folder. When you are done, you need to restart Illustrator because all scripts and plugins are read in at Program Startup. Once you have restarted Illustrator, you should have access to the script now by choosing File from the main menu and then look out for the script section and voila, there it is. Select Open Paths. I'm going to try it right away. So I'm running the script and might take some time, but then, oops, a lot of objects are selected. So those are all objects which are open paths. Some of them might just uh, be single strokes without the fill, but some forms probably will not match the iStock Photo quality standard. So I need to have a closer look what's going on here in my file. I then can see that most of the selected objects actually are single strokes with um, no visible fill applied and those strokes are just representing scars on the shark's head. So this is absolutely okay. But then on an even closer look, I can see that there actually is a form which is not closed. In this case, the shark's jaw. Um, I need to take the selection tool to deselect everything and then I'm going to have a more specific look at this object. Here are obviously two anchor points which aren't connected and I need to fix this problem. It's a good idea probably to isolate the selected object. Gives me a, a better impression of what's going on here. In order to fix it, to close the shape, I'm going to take my direct selection tool, the white arrow here, and then I'm selecting one of the concerned anchor points, and then I'm shift clicking the second one. And now in order to join them, I can just choose from the main menu, object, path, join, and the shape is properly closed. Um, I'm ending up here with one superfluous anchor point and I can also clean up manually by using the pen tool here or more specific the delete anchor point tool. I'm just clicking on one of the anchor points and it's going to be deleted. So now I can get out of isolation mode control the shape again probably and now everything looks fine. So problem solved. You carefully need to inspect all the selected objects by the script just to make sure that no open shape or stroke with the fill applied is escaping this control routine. Finally, I would run the script a second time. So again, File, Scripts, 
select open paths. As I can see, the jaw is not selected anymore, so I fixed this problem. And regarding the other selected objects, well, I just make sure that they are really now single strokes and that no fill is attached. While all the objects still are selected, I can um, check on the color panel. And then if fill is in the foreground, I simply click none. And then I made sure that all open paths have no fill attached. Now, what about custom brushes, effects, and filters? Um, your iStock photo artwork must not contain custom brush strokes, effects, or filters. Brush strokes need to be converted, or as it's called, expanded to vector graphic shapes, but effects and filters you should not use at all. In order to detect custom brush strokes on your artwork, I'm going to deselect here first, uh, we can actually use some built-in Illustrator routines. Choose Select from the main menu and then Object Brush Strokes. One object is selected in my case and I need to inspect this a bit more. It's a reflection in the shark's eye. Now if I want to see what's really going on here, I would trigger the appearance panel of my Illustrator installation. There I can see that this is actually, um, well, accidentally I applied a fill, that this is a stroke with a three-point oval brush applied. I need to expand this form into a plain vector graphic shape, and this is actually pretty easy. Under Object, Path, and um, then outline stroke, I can just convert and expand the affected brush. As you can see now it's just a vector graphic shape and no custom brush is involved. Now effects and filters you should avoid under all circumstances. In order to demonstrate how to find those effect and filters or to track them down in your Illustrator file, I'm going um, first to implement one of those effects. So I think I'm going to select here the uh, outer form marking the shark's eye and then I'm going to apply a typical effect. Let us say an um, stylize effect drop shadow. So I need to confirm the drop shadow dialog here. Okay, then it's applied, right? So not that those uh, kind of bitmap-like effects do, do really not look nice on your uh, vector graphic artwork. If your file is not supposed to be rejected by the iStock photo reviewers, you need carefully to avoid those um, filter and effect <laughs> effects. You can track those effects down by, uh, for instance, checking your layer structure. If um, you check on the circles here to the right of every object and layer, you will eventually find a filled circle. That means an appearance is applied. In your um, vector graphic artwork, opacity and gradients as a uh, um, appearance are absolutely allowed, but if a filter is involved, like in this object, you should um, not try to convert this or to flatten the appearance, um, you just delete it. So I'm going from the appearance panel here to select my drop shadow effect and then I am deleting the effect again. So um, before you submit your file to iStock Photo, you would check on every single object involved. Is there appearance involved? Is the appearance um, based on opacity changes or uh, on a gradient? That would be okay. Or is it a filter effect, which I probably just accidentally applied? We also need to make sure that our artwork contains no stray points. Stray points, um, well, happen all the time. You just use your pen tool, you click 
once on the artboard and then probably um, shift to another tool and forget about the point you just created, you have a stray point. I'm going to um, downscale the view. Um, fortunately, Illustrator has also a built-in routine dealing with this problem. So uh, you can just choose Select, Object, and uh, then Stray Points. And all the stray points on your artwork are selected. So um, I don't need no further inspection. Those are stray points in my artwork and I'm just going to delete them by pressing delete on my keyboard. Then I would run the routine again just um, to need, just to see if everything is cleaned up properly. Stray points again, no stray points selected. In addition, I can do a complete cleanup routine based on Illustrator defaults. Um, it's under Object, Path, and then Clean Up. So here it is. I'm checking on stray points, unpainted objects, and empty text paths. So just press OK, and hopefully you will also get the notice no cleanup was necessary. Then everything is fine. Now we already are reaching the final steps of our cleaning uh, process. If you used types, fonts in your artwork, um, you need to convert them into vector graphic shapes like you would do in any professional vector file. But on iStock Photo, you also have to regard copyright issues. So only use types and fonts with the proper license. You can convert types by uh, selecting them and then choosing Type Create Outlines from the Type menu. Right? And then you end up with vector graphic shapes. However, I'm not going to integrate this anyway into my file, so it was just for demonstration purposes. Also, all guides need to be deleted, deleted from your artwork. So if you used guides for your working process, you need to clear them by choosing View Guides, Clear All Guides. That would make sure that no guides are included. Then have a look at your Layers panel. All layers and objects need to be visible, so it's not allowed to have any um, object which is set to invisible in your artwork. All objects must be visible and unlocked. So it's also forbidden to deliver files with any locked object or a layer. Just check your file that it is completely unlocked and completely visible. So I cannot see any issue here in my file. Looks fine. Then make sure that all the content of your file is arranged in um, layers with appropriate naming, like for instance my background object here, uh, the shark itself, and then I have some ornaments like the bubbles here in a layer. So it's very, very important that you organize your objects and important objects you might also need to name further down in the layer structure, like the gills here, uh, the scars, and um, yeah, well, that's it. Last step would be to get rid of all unused um, panel items like swatches or brushes, which are probably still in um, your libraries here. I'm going to have a look at my swatches. Well, I actually can see there are a lot of standard swatches which are obviously not used in my illustration. And uh, also there are some brushes included. Now you don't want to submit those um, unused and superfluous panel items to um, your customers or to iStock Photo. Also, to deal with this problem, we have a pre-configured Illustrator routine. And in Illustrator CS6, you can find this under the Actions panel. If you scroll down, you find a standard action called Delete Unused Panel Items. You just need to select this and then to run it, 
using the play button. Then it runs through brushes and swatches and the result would be that only swatches you actually have used and declared in your illustrations are included in the swatches library and then if I have a um, view at my brushes only the basic brush is included. Last thing remaining is then to publish your Illustrator file in the uh, correct file format. First you want to save your Illustrator file. Control S and it's saved. And uh, then you can go ahead from the main menu File, Save As. Then um, from the Save As type drop down menu choose Illustrator EPS and press the Save button. I'm going to replace my existing file and here we have the EPS options. Now the most important thing is that you choose the correct EPS version, not the default Illustrator CS6 EPS, but according to iStock Photo Quality Standard, we need to downgrade to Illustrator 10 compatible EPS. So I choose Illustrator 10 EPS here. The preview format should be set to none. Um, we are going to create a separate JPEG uh, preview of the Illustrator file later. Um, I'm not going to embed any fonts here because my artwork does not contain fonts and if I would have converted them into vector graphic shapes before. You can ignore the warning here saving to a legacy format and uh, you just go ahead and confirm OK and also this um, alert can be ignored it just um, um, notifies you that saving this document in an older format may convert all type blah 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 so we just say OK and here we are our Illustrator EPS file is ready now if you have a look into your file folder you should see the originally generated Illustrator file together with the EPS file we just created. One more check, if you open this um, encapsulated postscript file in a text editor, a plain text editor of your choice, I'm going to do this with Notepad++. Then you can control the document header if it reads like here, PS Adobe 3.1, EPSF 3.0, you published into the correct format. So congratulations, you produced a um, quality controlled iStock Photo quality standard compatible EPS file. Hope this tutorial was helpful and I'm looking forward to see you again here on Section Q. Goodbye.